there's quite a story to discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't really talked about it on air since it came out. Saved it up for, for you and me yes. to talk about it. This one's very juicy. And there's a lot to say about <laughs> this. So there, there's a new DOJ indictment that just came down. And I'll let you take it over from here. Yeah, so DOJ announced this sweeping, like, Russian misinformation campaign. Of course, we're all kind of rolling our eyes a little bit, like, Russiagate 2.0, what are we talking about here? Then they drop one of the indictments, and, oh, it's interesting. Let's go ahead and put um, the tear sheet up on the screen. So, effectively, this conservative media company run by Lauren Chen and her husband, Liam Donovan, called Tenant Media, was taking millions of dollars from Russian assets to pay a variety, apparently unbeknownst to them, but to pay Lauren Chen and the, Liam Donovan, they knew that the money was coming from Russia. The influencers didn't, but to pay this cast of influencers, including Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, and Dave Rubin. Uh, Lauren Southern, Taylor Hansen, and Matt Christensen were the others in this uh, cast of characters. Um, the indictment claims, I'm reading from this article now, that the personalities on Tenet were not aware of the backgrounds and intentions of the two Russians and that the funding for this company came through a Canadian shell company from a fake frontman named Edward Gregorian who did not exist. They go on to say, despite the fact that Google searches for this individual didn't return any hits, two commentators in particular went through with the deal for millions of dollars, $100,000 per video they were receiving from this fake person. Um, in it, however, they did note that the fake founder may come across as too woke, flagging a commitment to social justice that they found in the fake resume that they put out. Um, so there, the details here are absolutely incredible. We can put this next piece up on the screen from the indictment. So apparently... Um, Initially, you know, they reached out to commentator one and two. One of these individuals is definitely Tim Pool. The other one is either Benny Johnson or Dave Rubin. The indictment doesn't say their names. It just says their YouTube subscriber numbers. Didn't they both release uh, statements they on it? They both released statements. And they're both Tim with Pool, Media? Yes. Okay. Tim Pool, Rubin, and Benny Johnson all put out statements. And by the way, and again, they're not indicted. The two Russian nationals are indicted. And I would think that Lauren Chen and Liam Donovan, they're not indicted. But I would think they might be in some legal jeopardy from this because those two actually knew that this was all fake. They were referring to these individuals that they were getting the money from as, quote unquote, the Russians. And um, they were Googling things like, you know, when they couldn't get in touch with them, what time is it in Moscow? <laughs> Things like that. So they clearly knew what was going on, allegedly, according to the DOJ. Um, and according to the DOJ, these individuals were classic useful idiots. They were offered this deal to get paid $400,000 a month in exchange for four videos and apparently didn't raise any eyebrows or questions about, like, who are these people and what do they actually want since on no planet is this, like, an actually economically sensible situation. And we should be clear, this is what's called a FARA violation, F-A-R-A. -A. Yes. And what that means is if you have foreign governments giving money in the U.S., you kind of have to register as an agent of said government for full disclosure and transparency, yeah. correct? Yes. And so the two Russian nationals that they indicted here are employees of RT. And they adopted pseudonyms and were actually put into the producer discord, helping to guide the content that was created. So they were using fake names, fake aliases when they were communicating with Tim Poole and Benny Johnson and their producers and all of this. We could put the next piece up on the screen and they have specific examples in the indictment of the type of content that they were pushing. I'll read you from the indictment. They say on or about February 15, 2024, one of the Russian nationals who was using this pseudonym Helena Shudra shared with Tenet Media a video of a well-known U.S. political commentator visiting a grocery store in Russia. Tucker Carlson. Of course, Carlson. we all know that would be Tucker Carlson. Um, the Russian National posted the video in the producer Discord channel. Later that day, an another producer, an actual producer on the channel, messaged uh, Founder2 on Discord, Founder2 being Lauren Chen, and says they want me to post this, referencing the Tucker Carlson grocery video, and saying effectively... It's thing, uh, it seems like it's overt chilling. It just feels like overt chilling. 
uh, Lauren Chen comes back and says, no, no, we think we should put it out there. And the producer agrees, saying, OK, fine, we'll put it out tomorrow. So they push them to post the Tucker Carlson grocery store video, which even these, you know, Tim Pool or Benny Johnson or whoever this producer was like, yeah, this feels a little over the top. But ultimately, they did it. There's another example we can give you here, too, of how they were trying to shape coverage. But this next one up on the screen, A4, um, they wanted uh, either Dave Rubin or Benny Johnson here, whoever it was, to focus on alleging that it was Ukraine behind the ISIS Moscow terror attack. And um, again, they agreed, no problem. He's happy to cover it. So um, the not only do you have the money coming from, you know, fake sources that turn out to be Russian, but then you have these actual two Russian individuals who are in the producer chat shaping the coverage here. And uh, yeah, just extraordinary. And the amount of money flying around I mean, is just crazy. So they're steering the content. Yes. They're literally steering the content. Yeah. And the other point that stuck out to me, which I didn't realize this before, is that the pseudonyms is how you know they know it's nefarious. Of course. On the yeah. Russian side. They yeah. know, hey, we're literally like like covertly infiltrating the US media here and we have our dupes, our useful idiots who are doing our bidding for us. Yes. Yeah. So it look, I have I have a lot to say about this, but first of all, let me just say a lot of people are kind of exonerating Dave Rubin and Tim Pool. In fact, I think you have Tim Pool's statement. You want to throw that up? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Walk through the rest six. of your thing. Okay. Well, hold on. First, let's do okay. A5, actually, because yeah, this is the fake resume, because this is the other piece that's just kind of hilarious. So they were looking for this fake businessman that is supposedly this, you know, elusive billionaire, Edward Gregorian, who's funding all of this money. That's the fakest shit I've ever seen in my life. And so they're like, okay, well, we can't find this guy on Google. And they're like, don't worry, we'll send you his resume. So they make up this resume oh. with this fake like businessman oh. looking contemplatively out the window of his private jet. And they raise no questions about this, except somewhere on this resume, it says like, oh, he's committed to social justice. That was the part that they were like, wait a second. I don't know about this. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, this was all it took for them to be like, all right, so it sounds good. I'm sure you didn't just like, you know invent this out of whole cloth because it is the fakest looking shit ever. And, you know, when you're making that kind of money, I guess it uh, paid for them to not ask too many questions or dig too deeply. Tim put out, Tim and Dave Rubin and Benny Johnson have all put out statements. Lauren Chen has been totally silent. As I said, she probably faces legal jeopardy here because she was misrepresenting, she was lying to these people and misrepresenting seemingly, according to the indictment, knew what was going on and was taking in this money. So she may actually face charges, but hasn't yet. We should be clear, as the time of this recording, she hasn't. Mm -hmm. dropped anything yet by the time this drops on Correct. YouTube. Maybe she did. Something. We don't know. Okay. Okay. So Tim Pool statement A6. He says, my statement regarding allegations and the DOJ indictment, should these allegations prove true, I, as well as other personalities and commentators were deceived and are victims, victims who got paid millions of dollars. I cannot speak for anyone else at the company as to what they do or what they're instructed. The Culture War podcast was licensed by Tenet Media. It existed well before any license agreement with Tenet and it will continue to exist after any such agreement expires. The only change with the agreement was that the location of the live broadcast moved to Tenet's YouTube channel. I and and TCW, that's the Culture War podcast, never produced any content for Tenet Media. Never at any point did anyone other than I have full editorial control of the show. And the contents of the show are often apolitical. Examples include discussing uh, uh, spirituality, apolitical? dating, oh and video my games. God. Yeah, that's what he's really known for is that apolitical content. The show is produced in its entirety by our local team without input from anyone external to the company. TCW is a separate company, not associated with TimCast.com or other properties. Exists solely for the production of the Culture War podcast. That being said, we still do not know what is true as these are only allegations. Putin is a scumbag. Russia sucks donkey balls. And to the journalists who wish to jump the gun, create their own narrative or lie about what's currently going on, you can eat my Irish ass. Now, by the way, a week or two ago, to just interject, yeah. there was a video of Tim Pool that went viral where he's on his show saying Ukraine is an enemy of the United States. And then he says something like, they're the enemy of the world. They're like the number one enemy. Oh. So, no, oh, interesting. Oh. Now all of a sudden, <laughs> oh. uh, Russia sucks donkey balls. Interesting. How yeah. did that happen? That's yeah. so strange. Yeah. When and you were saying the exact fucking opposite shit a week or two ago. I won't bother. Benny Johnson yeah, and, and Dave Rubin, similar though, were the victims. We were had, you know, and, and, and Dave Rubin in particular, you know, really pins the blame, you know, and justifiably so in certain respect on Lauren Shen. But that's basically they're they're like, you know, we've been wrong. No, I, we're no, the victims I don't buy that. of nope. this situation. Nope, 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 nope. This is what I hear. Everybody's saying that shit. Oh, you know, they didn't know where the money uh, came from, et cetera. I'm not contesting that. 
If they say they didn't know, I'm, I'm okay. I'll take you at face value that yeah. you, you didn't know. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm in this industry. You're in this industry. You know how I make my money? Patreon donations, two bucks, five bucks, seven bucks a month, tips on YouTube, and then what I call the default ads, which is the Google AdSense teams, but they place ads on the video. I don't know who, it could be any advertising company at all. I wouldn't know. I've never had a conversation with them. Right. I've never had a conversation with any advertisers. I've yeah. never done a single ad read in my entire fucking life. Your model is very similar to my model. You guys have a, a premium subscription model, and then on top of that, you guys also have the default YouTube ads. Yep. We, we've never talked to advertisers. We never talked to billionaires. We've never talked to foreign governments. Mm -hmm. We've not, If somebody came up to me, a shadowy figure, I'll give you $100,000 a month. I'll give you $400,000 a month. Of course, my first thought is going to be like, okay, what do you get out of this? Right. What do you want out of this? Why are you giving me this money? This of makes course. no sense. Where's this coming from? Is this an ethical conflict? So no, the people who are acting like, oh, they've been wrong. They're, in fact, Ben Shapiro came out and said, Dave Rubin and Tim Cast and Benny Johnson aren't the issue here. They were apparently deceived by the company founders who were allegedly taking Russian cash. That's exactly what I would expect Ben Shapiro to say, who jams an ad read into like a six or seven minute video that he drops. Yeah. Right. All, he's talking about shaving your balls and taking <laughs> dick pills in the middle of his six or seven minute video. You want to know why? Because he's a hack because he's a fucking sellout. And I'm sick. Look, independent media people, we all used to put ourselves on this pedestal. We're different. We're better. We have ethics. We have morals. Mm -hmm. We understand the problems with mainstream media. We understand the problems with corporate media. We understand that these guys are sellouts and these guys push a narrative. We're above that. This is the claim. No, the fuck you're not. Any of you who've taken, who've talking directly to advertisers, any of you who've taken money from foreign governments, by the way, even if it wasn't Russia, even if it truly was just a shadowy billionaire, fuck you, that's a scandal too. I'm not taking any money from billionaire robber barons. Crystal's not taking any money from billionaire robber barons. And you know what? We could probably make five times as much money as we do if we did sell out. But we don't want to sell out. So all this fucking, oh my God, I was lied to. Why the fuck did you take the money? Why did you take, of course there's going to be strings attached. Of course. Now, by the way, for somebody like Tim Pool, have you considered that maybe they picked you because you're a fucking dupe? Because you're an idiot who's going to parrot the Russian government line with zero nuance and zero real scrutiny and zero original thought? And who tweets civil war like every other day. This is no different than like <laughs> CNN hires Wolf Blitzer. They hire him because he, they know he's bland. They know he's banal. They know he's going to rock the boat. It's not like they pull Wolf Blitzer in and talk to him and say, you're going to be bland, you're going to be banal, you're not going to rock the boat, and you're going to parrot the U.S. corporate line. They don't have to do that because he's the useful idiot. They filter it out, they realize he's the one, and then they hire him. He thinks, hey, I'm doing my job the way I would always do my job. Yeah, but you were picked because you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Same thing goes for you, Tim Pool. Same thing goes for you, Benny Johnson and Dave Rubin. And Lauren Chen, don't even get me started on her. Again, you want to fucking... You can't say you're independent media, you can't say you're new media, you can't say you're, you're alternative media in a scenario where you are just as corrupt, if not more corrupt, I think they're more corrupt because they virtue signal like they're special. Yeah, that's you the thing. You can't virtue signal like you're special and you're above all these influences and then you're doing the same kind of fucking shadowy deals behind the scenes. Now, by the way, just to point out real quick, I'm not exonerating mainstream media because the fact of the matter is there was a big uh, fair wrote a piece on this that CNN took a lot of money from Dubai and yeah, basically ran right. puff pieces for that's Dubai. Right. Yeah. We see Saudi influence in the media. Lee Fong just had a big article about Israeli influence in the media. They have massive bot networks, and there are so many people who are probably on the payroll of Israel, knowingly or unknowingly, saying, so I'm not exonerating mainstream media or corporate media. I think they're very guilty of similar things as well. But all I have to say about these assholes is stop fucking putting yourself on a pedestal. You're hacks, you're frauds, you're con men. And if you really meant the shit you said about being better than corporate media, new media, you would have never taken this money ever. You wouldn't have taken this money. You wouldn't have, uh, you wouldn't talk to a billionaire or a robber baron or a corporation. You would model your business the same way I model mine and Crystal models her, which is I don't talk to anybody. I'm not going to have any impure inputs into the system. And I'm certainly not going to have some fucking asshole start pitching me stories. Well, I don't know what their nefarious motives are. $100,000 a month, 400000 You didn't stop and think, hey, man, this is a little fucking sketchy. $100,000 a video. A video. Sagar looked up what some of these videos got. It was 8, like 8,000 views. 8, that, I'm t like... We're in this business. Let me tell you what that gets you on YouTube. Basically nothing. You're talking about like 40 bucks, maybe. I mean, it's it ain't any $100,000. So, yeah, 
any idiot would look at that and go, what are what do they want here? What are they getting out of it? Like, that's the most basic question. But your point is such an important one, which even if it wasn't Russia or a foreign government or whatever, you have so compromised yourself. hundred percent. It's actually, I, you know, I was in the corporate media. I worked at MSNBC. It's actually, what they're doing is actually worse because in corporate media, there's at least some distance between the on-air talent and the people who work in the ad department who are actually actively like pitching the advertisers and like, you know, doing the money grubbing. Here, there's no distance whatsoever between the on-air talent and the advertisers you know, you're, they're reading their ads directly. I think that's really inherently, you know, wrong too, if you're purporting to be any sort of an independent. And it's one thing if you're like, you know, some whatever non-news person, but if you're purporting to analyze the news in a neutral way and you're directly reading ads and having direct meetings with advertisers, let alone taking millions from some, you know, shady fake businessman, it's, 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 completely disgusting. It's completely disgusting. And the results are also completely disgusting. The commentary that comes out of that system is utterly disgusting and, and contra- compromised. Independent media is a cesspool. Just like I did a video on it the other day saying the same thing. Independent media is fucked. All the same shitty incentives that exist for corporate media also exist in this world. The difference yeah. is these assholes have convinced themselves, no, we're special. You know, we're special. We're giving you a real perspective. We're giving you the real truth. Oh, don't look at my fucking funding and where it comes from and the fact that I took $100,000 per fucking video from somebody who I thought was a shady billionaire, which is bad enough, but turns out it's a foreign government. Okay? So just understand that. Get these people off a pedestal. They're not special. If anything, they're worse. If anything, they're worse. Because it's the added element of I'm going to virtue signal like I'm above it all when you're not above it all. Again, guys, I don't care about what people say. Look about where their funding comes from. Then you'll get a sense of whether or not they're truly principled. Yeah. Truly principled means, again, leaving a shitload of money on the table because you say, I wa- only want to be beholden to my audience. I only want to be beholden to my audience, and I'm okay with the default YouTube ads. That's how you don't have any inputs that can steer you in the wrong direction. They were so far away from that, and Tim Pool has the nerve at the end of it to act like he's spiking the football and doing an end zone dance. Eat my Irish ass, he says. I know. Tim, your whole fucking house of cards just came tumbling down. And you act like you're going to lay epic own people. And you know what? Maybe he's right that the people in his audience won't wake up to it. They won't. Maybe they'll be fucking zombies sleepwalking into oblivion listening to some asshole con artist spew his talking points on a daily basis. Yep. But just know the mask has been ripped off. We all see you for what you are. Oh, and one more point. Final point here. Yeah. And I alluded to this the other day, but I'm going to make it even more clear now. Somebody go print out the resistance liberal apology forms. Somebody go print those out. Because these motherfuckers over a long enough timeline are right about everything. <laughs> the one thing that I was like, nah, they re- this really was bullshit and they really did overreach was Russiagate. And to be fair, vis-a-vis Trump, Russiagate was a massive overreach. The Mueller report basically said there's corruption there, but it's not vis-a-vis Russia. Mm-hmm. Trump was very hawkish towards Russia. So on that front, yes, there was a grain of truth in the opposite position. But I mean, look, fucking Nick Fuentes just came out the other day and said Trump's all about himself and he betrayed us. And it's like, this is exactly what the fucking resistance liberals were telling you all along. And they were right. The resistance liberals were talking about Russian money infiltrating the media and spread. That's exactly right. This is exactly what the fuck this is. Print out the apology forms. They were right. We got to be willing to call a spade a spade. We got to be willing to be honest. We got to be willing to go where the evidence goes. It's a fact. It's a fact. And people might not like it, but it's the reality. So I'm just, I'm just so sick of these. Like our, our space is such a fucking cesspool. It is. Sub virtue signaling little grifters. Jesus Christ, bro. It's incredibly disappointing because, you know, even the like beholden to your audience thing, like even that is a risk and a danger because you you can be audience captured, right? You can be audience Mm -hmm. captured. You know, you see the way, I mean, you can tell when people are just like, churning out videos of whatever clicks best in the moment, courtesy of the, you know, algorithm program by Elon Musk or whatever other billionaire tech executive happens to be running the platform that you exist on. Like it's, it's very obvious and that's really common too. And again, you know, there's such a direct tie between how many views does this one video get and what is my profit directly into my pocket that there, the incentive is actually um, greater to just feed the audience what they want than the talent in corporate press who have their salary set and it's not directly by, you know, whatever the ratings are on their show that day. Their model is disgusting as well. But with these freaks, like they've not only replicated the model, they've managed to make the, the, the incentive structure even worse. 
the inst- than the incentive structure in corporate media. And you can see it like um, Megyn Kelly. She I did not like her, you know, her commentary at Fox News, but she is actually worse now than when she was even 100 percent. Tucker Carlson worse now yeah. managed to be worse now no. than when he was he, at Fox wait, News. He calls Alex Jones a prophet. He has, is Alex Jones a prophet? That's what he asked. Yeah, the guy who's wrong about 94% of the shit he says and says Obama was a demon because a fucking fly landed on his face. Yeah, that guy's a fucking prophet. The guy who said, uh, you know, there was a coup against Joe Biden. Yeah, prophet, sure. Are yeah. you fucking kidding me? They I overlook know. all the shit he says that's wrong and they blow up the 4% of shit he says that's right. And they act like, like again, this is what I say. This is the anti-establishment bl- brainworms as well. Yeah. The idea that I'm just going to take the opposite perspective of whatever the mainstream perspective is. Then you're a fucking idiot and you're a sheep, just like the people Which is, you're it, condemning. It's at least as dumb as of the course. people who just accept no, the mainstream narrative it's actually on more everything. Dumb. It's actually more dumb. Because that's how you get to a place where you think, like, uh, they put microchips in vaccines to try to fucking poison people. Yeah. Right? Or where you're like, oh, this uh, Nazi apologia hosted by, oh, they're telling the uncomfortable truths. It's like, no, actually, the Holocaust was bad and wrong. <laughs> right, yeah. We're all fucking right. Yes, it's the mainstream <laughs> consensus. It's also fucking correct. Okay. Right, yeah. I thought, wait, I thought Winston Churchill was the chief villain of uh, World War II. That's what I've heard lately. <laughs> I can't these fucking people. Man. Disgusting. And and the, the and the gross the thing that's so gross about it is like these people make so much money I, that's doing the thing. this disgusting that's, shit. Thank you for bringing that up because I, I wanted to point that out too. All these motherfuckers are da 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 dusting us, son. Dusting us. But oh, that's it's... that's what happens when you actually give a shit and like you got into this because you wanted to try to tell the truth and you wanted to do your best and you wanted to keep negative influence away from you. Like this is just what happens. Yeah. The people who are willing to sell out, the people who are the most shameless are the ones who are going to rise to the top and get the most views and get the most money. I yeah. mean, they are fucking swimming in money, dog. Yeah, that's right. Swimming in money. Yeah. And this is just one. Lord only knows how many other deals they have. Because this was, they're like, oh, we thought it was our regular shady billionaire deal. So we were fine with it. <laughs> how many other shady billionaire deals do you have? Right. <laughs> and in the other instances, it might actually be a billionaire and not be a, a foreign government. But still, how many... How much money are you making? Right. Well, and there's no surprise that someone like Ben Shapiro comes to defend them because he his company was also, you know, funded by a bunch of bills. Like they're all shady and corrupt, whether it's from foreign government money directly or their own shady other sources or ad dollars or whatever. So corporate money, et cetera. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and they have the nerve to go on air and like rail against corruption. Like you have no leg to stand on. Uh, you have negative legs to stand on. Ben, the, one of the last videos Ben posted was about like uh, some. Um, what was it? Some like Chinese spy was the wife of an aide of the New York governor or something like mm-hmm. that. There's some story that the right's playing up like Chinese infiltration. And it's like well, they, with, they always do that with Eric Swalwell. Who, oh, like, yeah, they did that with Swalwell. But there's a new one. There's a new date one with a ch- Chinese yeah. uh, spy. But there's a new one. And it's some new whatever point is here. He is defending mm-hmm. Benny Johnson, Dave Rubin, Lauren Chen. And then, like, the very last thing he posted is, like, look at this foreign meddling. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, like, let's say that this story had come out about you or me or Cenk Uger or, you know, someone on the left. Like, they would be all in on, oh, they're so corrupt, blah, blah, blah. I promise you, if this came out about somebody who was, like, an ideological ally of us, we would be saying the same shit, you know? Of course, but I don't. I don't think it will. <laughs> like, you know, maybe there's an outside chance that somebody in, in it is is taking money from some nefarious force, but it is literally not possible for me or you because we've built our business so that can't fucking happen. Yeah, that's right. You know. Yeah. So anyway, I can't stand these people, man. The details are wild, though. There's one. Um, there's one part where Edward Gregorian, the fake businessman, he's supposed to be on a Zoom call uh, to prove his existence. And he logs in at the wrong time because he logged in on Moscow time instead of like he's supposedly based in Paris. And then they have the Google search of him being like of the Russian national like fake people being like, what time is it in Paris? <laughs> oh, my God. Like you it is so true. Like if Resistance Libs had spun this, spun this tale, I'd be like, hey, this is too it's too perfect. There was it's another too much. story this week that we had to give credit to the resistance liberals. Do you remember what it was? I'm blanking on it. There were at least three or four, and I only remember two of them. But anyway, it doesn't really matter much. They've been right about so much. It's just the more time goes by, the more it's just like, told you. Yeah. It, the, okay. part of it, the part of it that sucks is, like, it's, they won't discriminate between, like, you know, people like us and our business model and our item and, and, you know, people like Tim Pool and whatever. It's just, like, anything. Like, I see a bunch of... 
uh, pro-Israel people who were using this to oh. say basically like, yeah, you no, know, oh, everybody who's criticizing Israel, oh, they're just like please. Russian plans no, no, no. or they're being paid by Hamas or <laughs> Iran uh, or whatever. Ironically enough, the people saying that are more likely to be foreign influenced or or bots because Lee Fong just did a report on this, that there's a massive effort from Israel to do the same thing that Russia was doing here, except the difference is Israel is going to be more successful. They have more funds. They care more about influencing U.S. opinion. So for sure. And like, yeah, that's the thing is the only reason we're even hearing about this one in particular is because Russia is an enemy of the U.S. That's right. Right. If it, again, if it comes to Saudi Arabia, we know they're influencing. Doesn't fucking matter. They don't care. Nobody bats an eyelash. Yeah. When it comes to Qatar, like we said, CNN had to deal with Qatar. Nobody cares. They're our ally. Nobody bats an eyelash. Yeah. Israel, forget. It. Of course, nobody bats an eyelash. But well, the and we influence know. network is probably even bigger for some of them. And it's just that there's no scrutiny because there are allies. You can get away with it. Yeah. You know what and I'm we, saying? we know from um, Israeli news media, but also picked up by mainstream outlets here, that the Israeli government has been running an influence campaign on our population, on our lawmakers in particular. They targeted a, a black group of black yeah, lawmakers. That was one thing, yeah. And they created fake news website. It's the exact same thing that the um, government is accusing uh, this doppelganger, quote unquote, network of like Russian bots and whatever. It's it's the same playbook of we're going to have a bunch of fake people online, like towing our uh, towing our line and replying to these prominent Congress people who we think are important and influential and sharing these fake news articles and all like it's it's all the same model. But um, yeah, I don't think there's going to be any indictments coming on that one. No, there won't be. Strange that, enough. That's the part that sucks. But that does not at all exonerate these assholes. No, not, not at, at all. all. Not even a little bit. You should disregard everything these people say from now until the end of time. And I'm not being even a little bit hyperbolic. They're just as big of hacks, if not bigger hacks, than the people they criticize all the time in mainstream media. So remember that. Yes, indeed.